pastor of New Beginnings Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. So glad to see you all today. Amen. We come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We already had a wonderful time in our devotional service, giving thanks unto God. And yes, I love to sing my song. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And we ended up with saying, thank you, Lord. Anybody out there today just thankful? Thank you for God being so good to Yes, sir. Thank you yes. for the ways you have made. Thank you for the doors that you have opened, oh Lord. Some of you didn't realize, amen, from the time that you was a, a youngster, amen, to where you at today, you didn't realize how to leave that you would be there. But look what God has done. God has blessed you and God has kept you. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, but they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Turn with us to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 1 through 9. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 1 through 9. Amen. While you turn it, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week safely. No hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. Thank God how he bless you, how he bless your families. Amen. We thank you for uh, being, I thank God for being able to be an audience. Amen. The home going service of our dearest minister and that young brother yesterday. Amen. A faithful servant of the Lord who fought a good fight, who kept the faith. And I wanted to acknowledge you because we went to school together, graduated from Oakland in 1976. Amen. And I don't know how to do that, but I just want to uh, say thank you, Lord, for the life of Sister Annette Youngblood and a beautiful home going service. Amen. That's the way I want to go. The way we had a service on yesterday. Amen. We thank God for you. As we Go into the word of God, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the first to the ninth verse. Again, we thank God for all the, the members of New Beginnings Church, those that are here, those that are at home, those that are listening in. We ask you to pray in your hearts as we go into the word of God on today. 2 Corinthians, fourth chapter, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Ask you to look down upon us as we break the bread of life. Give us word, O oh Lord, for your people. I pray, God, I will be obedient, O oh God, to the Holy Spirit, O oh God, as it moves me. Oh, God, to speak, hallelujah, your word today. Bless your word today, oh, Lord. Look down upon your servant here today. Lord, I decrease that you may increase, and I bind up the hand of the enemy in anything that will try to hinder this word today. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 Eighth of the ninth verse, we will read again. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. I'd like to leave a thought with you all today. I still have a praise inside of me. I still yes, sir. have a praise yes. inside of me. Yes. Here we are today, thanks to God, visitors. Last Sunday in June, this lets us know that the half of 2020 is almost gone. Half of 2020 is almost gone. And I'm sure when you started out this year, you probably heard 
myself or other preachers said, 2020, mm. perfect vision. 2020, I can see clearly now. But I'm sure many of us can probably say, we didn't see this coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But who knows the mind of God? God wants us to see. Maybe not what we wanted to see. But God is pulling the cover on some stuff where we can see what is going on in this world. Amen. I wish I had a witness out there that can see some of the things that I see. And like God has pulled the cover on some things that's going on in government. Amen. Some things that are going on in Hollywood. Yeah. Things that are going on in the sports world. Yeah. Things that are going on in the banking industry. Amen. Things that's going on in the education field. And now God pulls some cover off some stuff, some stuff in 2020. But now what are we to do with Amen. This last half of 2020 is going to tell a story. Yeah. So let's prepare our hearts and mind. Yes, sir. Amen. The Bible says, gird up the Lord's in your mind. Yes, sir. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of who might? In his might. Yes, sir. Amen. And watch and see what God do. But the thought on today, the text today is, I still have a praise inside of me. When I heard that this latest thing coming up was this dust storm that came all the way from Africa, came across the Atlantic Ocean, coming up through South America, now all the way here in the United States, 5,000 miles away. I said, great, hey, this reminds me of some stuff. It went on in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And I wonder if some of you out there today, did you begin to flip the pages or begin to scroll through your iPad or iPhone or whatever you have and begin to look in the first part of Exodus when God told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go and Pharaoh refused. And then the ten plagues came. Yeah. The water turned to blood, the yeah. lice, the frogs, amen, the flies, all these terrible things. And I wonder if anybody hear what I'm saying that I wonder if we are going to go through 10 of these like they went through back then. Mm -hmm. We don't know that. But I want you to know, keep your praise under God. Keep your hope in God. Hold fast to what you have in God. I still have a praise inside of me. The praise of Egypt affected only Egypt, the Egyptians, Pharaoh, and his people. And I say that to say this, God's people, it did not affect them. They was in the same way, but it did not affect them. But this pandemic that's going on with this COVID-19 and all these other things, it is sweeping the earth. It has affected churches. It has affected schools and so many other areas. Turn some things upside down. And I believe, like I can say, God is revealing some stuff during these last days. Yes, sir. And I believe that with the unrest that we see in people today, yes, there's a lot of unrest because of the movements of the Black Lives Matter from the different ones, sports players taking a knee, amen, amen, to uh, bring light to the police brutality, some of the, uh, the behavior of some of our officers. And it's not all of them. Most of our officers, I believe, are very good people. Amen. But the ones that want to use their position to abuse people, amen, not just black, but we see that the picture we see a lot of times is those of African Americans. Amen. But all of this stuff is coming upon us. And I believe all the unrest and protests is not just about the police. Amen. I believe people are beginning to be tired of this mess. Amen. I believe people are tired of being taken advantage of. And I believe that this is beginning to spill out in our society. In 1964, there was a lady by the name of Fannie Lou Hammer. I don't know if you ever heard of her, but you should look that up. She was a black activist from Mississippi. She, she heard about that blacks at the time had come down to, uh, they had been a, a, a approved to go and register to vote. And she wanted to vote. And she went through a lot. The police beat her so terrible. She lost a kidney, uh, had a blood clot over her eye, the leg beat her, had two people to hold her down and beat her till she almost died. But she came back after a month of, of, of being away, she came back again. 
still trying to work, amen, for voters' rights and registration. Even so much so that she was eventually elected to speak at the Democratic National Convention. And she had some good old-fashioned quotes. It ain't nothing you're going to read, amen, like Socrates or somebody like that, but old-fashioned quotes. And this one we have heard over and over. I'm going to read this to you. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Maybe you never heard that. Yes, sir. Maybe you never experienced that. Yeah. Maybe you ain't never been through that. But sometimes you can get sick and tired yes. of being sick and tired. Yeah. And I believe people are sick and tired of government and businesses and banks and, and other places taking advantage of, of us. Amen. But we still have to keep a praise unto God, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Amen. I have a praise inside of me. Many of you out there that I'm talking to today, you are pulling more than your share of the load in your family. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You are pulling more than your share. Yeah. And it's time, amen, for some other folks in the house to come on up a little bit higher and help ease the load for you. But until that time comes, I want to encourage you to faint not. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't faint, church. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Lift up your head. Hallelujah. I know it's not easy. Amen. But you can make it. With God on your side, you can make it. Amen. But the text tells us today, amen, we are troubled on every side. Yes. Now, I read that, taught on it, preached it. Amen. But I never looked at the original meaning of that. And I just want to just share just a piece of that, of that uh, passage of scripture there. The text says that we are troubled on every side. Every side. The original meaning of that means we are suffering in a tight place. Now if you got your bills or paper or whatever, you can, you can, you can notice it, you can write this down, it might be a blessing to you. We are troubled on, on every side means we are suffering in a tight place. But we are not distressed. Not distressed means we are not locked down. Now, in this pandemic, there are a lot of people to stay home. There are a lot of people are, are home from work, so they are home all the time. They are home from their jobs. They are home from not going to restaurants, not going to the movies. But I want to tell you something. Now you hear, don't hear me good. I was talking with Mother Motley, one of the wonderful women of God at the House of Prayer. We were just talking about the goodness of God. And she made a statement, and I thought it was so good. I said, I'm going to share this. We can be shut in, but we don't have to be shut out. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God. Yes, sir. I still have a praise inside of me. Hallelujah. We are perplexed. That means we don't see no way out. But we are not in despair. That means we are not in a loss. What do you mean by that? Now you're kind of contradicting yourself a little bit there, preacher. Yes, we don't see no way out. But there is a way out by the God we serve. Amen. If you heard Sunday school lesson on today, if you studied your Sunday school lesson, God sees all. There's still a way out. Hallelujah. When you don't see your way, when it looks like everything is, like, is blocking you, and all you see is a wall in front of you. My God, he is able, hallelujah, yes, to take that wall and make a door and open the door, and I'm able to walk in, hallelujah. Don't you know God is able? Do you believe God or do you not believe God? Amen. I heard somebody by the name of Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, they were put into the fiery furnace. The people that put them into the fire, fiery furnace, it was so hot that it killed them. And the Bible said that they uh, was put into the furnace, and the Bible said King Nebuchadnezzar, he leaned over. I don't know how he did that, but he probably stood up for us. He said, I heard that we put three in the fiery furnace, but I see four yeah. in the fiery furnace. Yeah. And the fourth one looked like the Son of God. Yes, sir. And the Bible said God brought them out of the fire furnace. And the Bible said there was even out of the smell of fire was not on their clothes. Yeah. What I'm saying, I said God is, out, is able to bring you out of a tight place. He's able to bring you out of a place of being locked down. He's able to bring you out of a place where it looks like there is no way out. In despair, persecuted. Hallelujah, God is able. 
to bring you out. Yeah. Cast down. Yes, sir. Means thrown to the trash. You ever heard it saying thrown to the curb? Mm -hmm. That's not Satan want to do. He want to steal, kill, and destroy you mm -hmm. and throw you to the curb. Yes, sir. Throw you to the trash. Though you may feel like you are cast down, but you are not destroyed. Not destroyed means you're not fully dead. Mean that there's still some life. Yeah. That means there's still a glimmer of hope. Hallelujah to God. It's like a boxer. Amen. The one that they fight against knocked one down. Knocked it down so bad. Amen. That is his, his team, his, the men in his corner, they want to throw in the white towel and say, stop the fight. Our fighter's getting beat down. He can't take no more. But that fighter that's laying down tells him, hold up. I still got some fight in me left. Hallelujah. So therefore, people of God, hey, now hold on to God. Cast down. But not destroyed. Yeah. I'm not dead yet. Hallelujah. I still have a praise inside of me. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you are going through today. Keep your praise unto God. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Mm -hmm. I want you to praise God. Make this, make this a declaration. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him. Whatever it costs, I got to praise my God. Sometimes in life, thanks to God, you got to make a decree. What is that? You got to de declare something to be so. I remember probably 30 years, probably 30, 35 years ago, probably 25, I don't know, been a while. My wife and I, we married, raised a family. Every month, we was getting to the zero fact. Y'all know what the zero fact is? That means you ain't got nothing in the checking account, and you know, took all the money out of the savings account. Savings account, you to keep the checking going. I mean, zero, zero, zero all around. And I made a decree that day. Like I said, it's probably 25, 30 years ago. I made it, I said, my, I told my wife, we will not go into that zero factor again for the rest of our days. And I thank God, hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. We are still, hallelujah. Amen. Doing all right, hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Why? Because God gave us wisdom. Amen. He didn't give us so much money. Amen. That we didn't get there. But I, when I saw how the money was going, Stop spending. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You got to use what God gives you wisely. You can't spend 2000 if you're making 1000 a week. Amen? Amen. And that's what happens with We put so much on ourselves that it hinder our praise. Amen. Hallelujah to God. We take on so much. We do so much. We try to help so much. But sometimes you got to take care of yourself. You need to cherish your relationship with your God. Amen. Sometimes you got to tell people, back away for a minute. I got to spend some time with God. Yeah. I got to go to my secret closet and talk to my father. Tell him how I feel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I still Thank you, Jesus. have a praise unto God. You're going to get rough. You're going to get tough sometimes. But still have a praise unto God. The enemy wants you to be quiet. He wants to stifle your praise. But I want you to know no matter what the enemy do, no matter what he bring to you, continue to give God the praise. If the enemy tie your hands and your feet, keep on praising God. Hallelujah! Yeah. Continue to give God the praise. Hallelujah! Well, he said, well, what if he, what if he put some duct tape over my mouth? I want you to still give God the praise. Yeah. Well, I can't open my mouth, but you can still say, mm, mm, mm. what is that? God, you good. Hallelujah! You can still give him the praise. Give God the praise. I still have a praise yeah. yes, inside sir. of me. Yes, sir. Thank God you. is looking for somebody you, to give a praise. Not when just things are going good, yeah. but when things are against you. Hallelujah. Who knows, hallelujah, what God can do when you step out of faith and give him the praise. Then God can call Michael. Hallelujah. Come. Come here, Michael. Go to sister. Jones rescue. Go to sister so-and-so rescue. They still praising me. Hallelujah, but it don't seem like they need to be praising me. God will come to your rescue. You. Oh, yes, he will. Yeah. Yeah. I still have a praise inside of me. Friends may leave you. Family may forsake you. But God said, I'll be there always, even until the end of the world. I still have a praise inside of me. Sometime in this journey, 
It's going to get lonely. Amen? And loneliness, it's, it's not easy sometimes. But sometimes, I'm going to tell you, you can, be a, you can be in a crowd of people and still feel lonely. Amen. You say, what? You here with all these people and you're lonely? But don't let the devil speak it to your ear. I heard a church mother, uh, I was look, looking on the internet and I just have to, somebody put this little caption up, this church mother, and she, church mother was telling, was just giving God praise, how God brought her through so many things in her life. And she encouraged the people, amen, keep the devil under your foot. Because if the devil get out from under your foot, then he gonna rise up to get in your ear and begin to tell you some stuff. Begin to tell you, you ain't gonna make it. You gonna die here. Amen. You're going to be broke. Amen. All these negative things. Amen. But you've got to speak life into yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to tell yourself, I am blessed. you got to tell yourself, I am healed. you got to tell yourself, I am blessed going out and I'm blessed going in. Hallelujah. My family is blessed. My money is blessed. Hallelujah. My church family is blessed. My pastor is blessed. Amen. Speak the word. Hallelujah. The centurion told him to go call Jesus. Come out, servant is sick. Jesus is about to come. Amen. To go because he heard that this was a good man. Even though he was a Roman centurion. But he said he was a good man. And Jesus was on his way. But the centurion heard that Jesus was on the way. The centurion hurried up and sent out one of his soldiers. And said, don't come to my house. I'm not worthy. He said, but I am a man of authority. Just like you. I can tell my soldiers to come here. And they'll come. I can tell my soldiers, go there, and they would go. You, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Messiah. You are the great and holy one. Just speak the word, and my servant will be healed. Jesus turned around and said, I have not found so great a faith in all Israel, a Roman centurion. But what did he do? He said, simply, he said, Jesus told him, speak the word. He said, Jesus, just speak the word, and my servant will be healed. I want you today. To speak the word. If things go on array in your house, things going crazy in your life, speak life into that dead thing. You can speak life Amen. into a dead situation. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. What are you doing? You're putting a little water on it. You can go in a desert. There ain't nothing but saying, but put a little water there. Something's gonna sprout up. It baffles my mind. On the highways, on Interstate 20, they got concrete and asphalt over huge areas. And every now and then, here comes a little weed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where in the world did that weed come from? Hallelujah! Amen. That's like us sometimes. Yeah. Amen. We got to be like a time, a time next watch. Take a lead and keep on ticking. Hallelujah. I still have a praise inside of me. Amen. Keep your praise. Keep your joy in the Lord. Yes. If you're around negative people, get away from them. Get around somebody that loves to praise God. I feel better when I'm around people that love and praise God. Yes, sir. I feel a little pep in my step. I feel a little pride in my stride yes. when I'm with somebody that love and praise my yes, God. Sir. Hallelujah. Thank God for you today. Thank Amen. You. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah. May God continue to bless and keep you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get to know him. Amen. There's still people out there who want to be saved. Amen. The rapture had not came yet. Amen. I know it feels like tribulation to some people. Amen. But hold fast to God. If you don't know him, get to know him. If you are a sinner, you need to be saved. Yes. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Either you're a sinner or you're a saint. Amen. Get right with God and do it now. Time is short. He said in his word, be ye also ready. For such an hour you think not that the Son of Man comes. Amen. Be ready. I say to the church here, do begin this church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live ready. We don't know the day nor the hour. With all that's going on, I can imagine in some people's mind, they probably say, Lord, I'd be glad you take me on out of here. But God got us here for a reason. Yes, sir. To do his will. Yes, sir. To glorify him. To put a, to give the devil a black eye that we're going to still praise him. Thank God for you. I love you. May have a smile upon you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. And I want the best for you. Amen.